everybody and welcome back to another episode of LTA Let's Talk About And uh, today uh, it's going to be a really special episode because this episode is um, based on a question from one of our viewers uh, So Richie Lo yep. um, from our group in RKMD on Facebook So if you're not a RKMD member yet, make sure you join our Facebook group RKMD where we talk about a lot of things in depth um, about mobile and technology there. So back to the to the to the, to the show. So Richie asked uh, if we can come up with a show about e-wallets. So what e-wallets are available in the country, why e-wallets and specifically what e-wallets the whole team here in Swedish is using. And this episode we're going to specifically talk about e-wallets. Uh, so Richie if you're watching, thank you for the suggestions. And please, everybody else, if you want us to talk about a topic that you need uh, an answer to, um, let us know. We'll do the research. We'll answer all the questions for you. Put them in the comments below or chat with us in RKMD. All right, so let's get to the topic today. E-wallets in Malaysia. Um, how many e-wallets are there available in Malaysia? Um, why e-wallets in Malaysia? And what e-wallets do we use personally in, in Suai Jinjau? Um, so, there is a lot of confusion uh, when it comes to e-wallets especially because there's so many permutations, yeah. right? So, you have the standard implementation of e-wallets like uh, Grab, Boost, uh, Boost Touch and Go uh, e-wallet. Yep. And then you have like very specific implementations of e-wallet uh, like BigPay, uh, Settle, Kipple Park. Uh, Kipple. And then you have like banks uh, wanting to join into the e-pay market. So uh, things like Maybank, May. May. Um, yeah. So uh, there's like a wide spectrum of e-wallets. And obviously we won't be able to cover all of them in, in, in this show, but we're going to highlight the e-wallets that we use and why. But before I get into that, uh, maybe Alex, you can give like a brief, like, like an introduction of like the e-wallet industry or, mm -hmm. uh, or situation in, 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 in the country right now. So I think right now in Malaysia, you see dozens of e-wallets and if you check with Bank Negara, uh, to operate e-wallet, you need to have an e-money license. And right now, if you look at Bank Negara Malaysia's website, there's about 40 over, so I think close to 50, 50 over uh, e-wallet, uh, so e-money issuers. So you have five banks and 42 non-banks, so that's 47 in total, yeah, oh, wow. 47. So there are more non-banks, okay, getting this e-money license. license like. yeah. Why do you need a license? Because obviously you're handling people's money and you, of course there needs to be some regulation involved. Mm. So that actually affects the wallet size and how much liability they can have at a single time. Uh, yeah. How much money can an e-wallet keep? Uh, I'm not sure exactly but there are two levels. There's mm. also like the, they call the large money issuer and small mm. money issuer. So the mm. smaller one is about 200 ringgit. That's why some e-wallets, right, you notice there's a maximum cap of 200 ringgit. You mm -hmm. can't go more than that mm -hmm. and you have a smaller liability. Mm -hmm. And to go beyond that, I think you need to have to meet certain criteria. Uh, I guess that's to protect consumers. So you need yeah. to be able to like have enough resources to back up the money that you're going to keep inside the e-wallet. So on the surface of it, 200 ringgit maximum cap in an e-wallet may sound not a lot. But if you multiply that by like maybe a thousand users or ten thousand users, that's that a, lot. a lot of money that the company is holding, um, and we're not sure what they're doing. So, so that is with regards to e-wallet in Malaysia right now is regulated, I think, but it's fairly loosely regulated, la. It's not as strict as banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're holding <clears throat> money. I mean, as much as banks. So the. You, you did some research in terms of transactions, right? Yep. So how much have Malaysians paid out mm -hmm. uh, using e-wallet? Okay, looking at this uh, report by the Malaysian Reserve, right? Uh, they got some statistics from uh, Bank Negara Malaysia and apparently in the first six months of this year, Malaysians spent 7.3 billion ringgit on their e-money, basically e-wallets. And that's a combination of about close to 1 billion transactions. So that's... It's a huge... Seven, okay, that's more than a billion ringgit a month in just e-wallet yep. transactions. So this doesn't include like credit card transactions and, and all that. Yep. Okay, so we know that in Malaysia, uh, we have about 47 companies, companies who, are, have license who to are licensed to be e-wallet operators. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that the market size is huge. Yep. Uh, in the first six months of this year alone, people spent over 7 billion ringgit on through transactions through e-wallet. So it's massive. 
Then the question is, why e-wallet, right? Why not just get a credit card? Why yeah. do you need an e-wallet? The answer is very simple, actually, because not a lot of people in Malaysia or around the world uh, have the ability to get credit. They might not be able to get facility, or some some of them just don't have access to banks. So if you look at China, for example, the number one I think market for e-wallets, right? Uh, e-payments. The the adoption is very high there because people skip credit cards altogether. So they are a huge population of unbanked uh, Chinese people in China that they, they don't use bank but they have money but they need to do business, they, do, they need to do transactions and a lot of all these tech companies, they, they, they see an opportunity to like, hey, you know, why don't we serve these uh, unbankable people? So, so they, these, these, these unbankable people, they jumped from banks, they skipped banks altogether. Cash and straight to e-wallet. Uh, from cash straight to e-wallet. Mm. So e-wallet uh, is, is massive now in China. So there's uh, Alipay, WeChat Check Pay. Um, and it's not just big companies that use e-wallet in China. Even the small, small vendors, uh, equivalent to like the nasi goreng, nasi goreng makci, the or pasar malam stalls. The mama, yeah. <laughs> everybody is using e-wallet. So it's an opportunity for, especially in Malaysia, for people who don't use banks, it's an opportunity for them to move, right? To, to be able to operate a business and to be able to keep their money secure. Mm. But ironically, because of this, because of the multiple permutations of e-wallets, right? So you have Grab, which is like a super app. And it's the most direct translation of how an e-wallet should function uh, based on, uh, you know, uh, people's usage and then you have Settle so Settle is like Petronas uh, it only works for Petronas, Petronas station yeah. and it doesn't work for anything else right yeah they actually open to open stations but so far they only support Petronas and then you have Keeper, Keeper, Keeper Park Keeper Park yeah. which only works for parking but serves the same purpose uh, a, f- a function as an e-wallet there's a lot of permutations regulation is going to be very complicated lah, mm-hmm. um, because h- how do you decide what transaction and, and whatever. And, and if you look at the evolution of e-wallets uh, in China, for example, right? Uh, the e-wallet industry has now, the, 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 finance, the finance technology, fintech, right? Has evolved to provide credit. Yep. And, and that's super risky because we don't know who these brands are. I don't, I don't trust Grab over like Maybank, for example. I don't trust Skipper. I don't know. Um, I don't know who these people are, and and we're putting money and transacting billions of ringgit through these people, and they're taking our money and they're rolling it, right? Yeah. So, it's uh, it's a bit of a like give. I don't know, give and take. It's kind of like, how do we balance this, right? Yeah. I think the regulators need to be more stronger in regulating and, and whatever. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about that a little later. Right, right now, okay, so we know the size of the market. We know why people are using e-wallet. It's because of convenience. You don't need to handle cash. It allows people who are not uh, able to get credit cards and, and, and bank loans to be able to now use cash. All right, so here's the problem. We're putting in billions of ringgit into e-wallets, right? So we're putting billions of ringgit into Grab, uh, Kippel, Petronas, Touch and Go, whatever, uh-huh. at least have like 200 ringgit in a, in a wallet, right? The thing is, I don't, I don't trust uh, these brands more than I do Maybank, for example. I trust, uh, what I mean is, I trust Maybank more than, uh, than Grab, but we're transacting a lot of money. So th- 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 there's a bit of a, like a balance that we need to balance out. Lah. But we're going to talk about that a little later. Right now, we already know the size of the market. It's billions of uh, ringgit. Uh, in, in the first six months of this year alone, uh, over 7 billion ringgit transacted um, via e-wallets. We know there are 47 licensed e-wallet vendors in Malaysia, uh, uh, but most of them have not come up with any. Yep. Example, banks. All of the bank, mo- most, most of the, of the banks, banks have license, yeah. but they have not come up with anything except for Maybank. Uh, and then now we're going to talk about the ecosystem of of e-wallets, right? So, how many e-wallets that are available r- right now? Like, um, the, the main ones? I think the main ones, the more popular ones with the significant um, number of outlets, I would say probably less than five, I yeah, guess. Yeah. I think the biggest one would be GrabPay, Touch & Go e-wallet, Boost, FayPay was there mm. quite a while back. Now, I'm, I don't really see them, mm. but they are still around. Mm. Yeah. 
Sabo? So basically, for it, it's keeper, keeper pay. In, they are, I think they are more popular for the keeper park rather than the keeper pay. Yeah. And then yeah. there's big pay. Okay, that is a different mm. um, kind of implementation altogether. It's a different platform. I will consider big pay as a prepaid card with e-wallet features. Okay, so yeah. let's let's do this. So we have uh, we categorize uh, e-wallets probably in three categories. Number one is the the standard implementation of e-wallet. So what is the standard implementation of e-wallet? Meaning that you top up the wallet with your cash and then you can pay for things, right? So the most successful I've seen so far is, and most, most popular, I wouldn't say successful, um, is Grab. Mm -hmm. And then you have Boost. Yep. Um, and then you have Faith. Faith is kind of not here, not there. Um, and then you have the other more creative implementation. Yep. So the specific ones that we mentioned just now is like Settle. So Settle, you can pay for petrol. Uh, Keeper, uh, although they try to be a full-fledged uh, e-wallet player, they're now very popular with Keeper Park that allows you to pay uh, parking using an e-wallet. Uh, so you don't have to go through the hassle of looking for a card, uh, looking for a small change. All you need mm -hmm. to do is just pay in the app. Uh, previously, if you have a card, you just scan and then um, and then it's, it's done. Now, they have uh, parking lots with license plate recognition. Uh, so you don't have to do anything at all. All, all uh, everything is done by the system. You just pay. The system recognizes that you're paying, and you can go out from the parking. Uh, and then we have like a hybrid implementation. Banks getting involved. Yeah. So the most prominent one is May. Maybank. Yeah. How, how does that work? How does May work? It started from QR Pay. So mm -hmm. Maybank tried to get into the e-wallet game by offering QR payments. So you can scan using your Maybank app, and then you deduct straight from your bank account. And with May is kind of like a, it's more like towards the e-wallet side because they're going to the unbankables, so to the unbanked people. So initially, you need to have a Maybank account. So now, with May, anyone can just set up from the app. You don't need to go to the bank, submit your IC and all that. You can just create a May account. You get a virtual Maybank account and can start transacting immediately. Mm. So you can top up using FPX, top up for anything, or you can to even top up from the cash deposit machine at Maybank outlets. So you can top up your e-wallet using the CDM machine? CDM machine, because essentially, they they created a bank account number. You actually have a proper bank account uh -huh. number. So you can actually top up, you can accept funds from your friends. I see. Yeah. And then, okay, the other one that's interesting for me is Big Pay. Yeah. So how does how does that work? Okay, normally mm -hmm. when it comes to debit prepaid cards, right, mm -hmm. the experience is not that great. Mm -hmm. You need to go to the desktop website. Mobile apps from banks are normally not that polished. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they, they essentially is a prepaid card with e-wallet features. So the interface looks clean. So what you do is, uh, being a prepaid card, you can top it up using your online banking. And here's the interesting part, you can even top up with a credit card. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but Grab can do that also, right? Correct. But the thing is, this is using a fiscal card. So the advantage of having a prepaid card is that you can use it anywhere that accepts a credit card. So you have a wider reach. And another benefit of uh, Big Pay is that uh, they offer attractive rates for foreign exchange. Mm -hmm. So if you travel a lot, um, Big Pay is recommended for that. So normally, the traditional way is you go to a money changer, queue up and get, get your money out. But with BigPay, I don't need to do that. I can just go overseas, withdraw money, and I think they charge like a 10 ringgit transaction fee. And the exchange rate is super low, so at the end, you get more bang for buck. Oh, okay. So, you can see that, you, I hope you can see what we mean by the straightforward implementation and then the specific implementation and this hybrid thing where uh, banks are getting into the game and yep. uh, people who are, who are um, not getting into the game but trying to map like an e-wallet with a physical card for better... Um, compatibility when you're going outside of the country. It's like taking something traditional and make it smarter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, right? What what I see the common the common thread here is that uh, the biggest hook for people getting onto e-wallets is convenience. I don't have to handle cash, mm -hmm. uh, and it it makes it easier for me to do things. It makes it easier for me to uh, pay for parking, yeah. pay for petrol. Uh, I don't have to worry about my card. I can just bring a phone. It's done. Uh, the other big thing is rewards. So the reason why I'm hooked on uh, e-wallet is mostly because of rewards. But we'll get into that a little later. We've covered about the e-wallet market. Uh, we've kind of loosely talked about the e-wallets that's available in Malaysia. Uh, the, the, the specific question right now is, what e-wallets are the Solution Show team using? So I'm going to go around and ask the team later. Uh, maybe, Marcus, you can follow me around when we ask the people. Uh, I think I'll go with you first, Alex. So what e-wallets are you using almost every day right now? How many? Okay. And why? Uh, GrabPay. Uh, that's number one because it's a super app. Right? I always use it for rides. I use it for food delivery. 
And one thing I like about GrabPay is that the rewards as well, just like you. So it's easy to get rewards. And one thing I like is that they try to encourage you to use rewards more. So they have more attractive rewards. And the best part about uh, Grab is that when you try to make payments at like a shop, they always recommend, would you like to use your points to pay instead? So that actually makes your transaction cheaper. Mm. So instant rewards. So, so you can offset purchases with points. Yeah, so one good example was at KLA, uh, when I tried to take the ELL train back. So instead of paying like 55 ringgit, so they, they, I think they offer a discount, so it's like 50 ringgit or 45 ringgit. Mm. And on top of that, you can use your points to, to get a discount. So you can rebate, get extra rebate. So at the end, I only paid 27 ringgit for one train ride. So Grab is good value for money. Lah. Yeah, and then it helps you save. Okay, yeah. then I know you use Touch and Go. Yes, so Touch and Go e-wallet. So uh, the, re- the main reason why I installed Touch and Go e-wallet is because of the RFID. So I use that. and. I think from there, they actually expand the usage. Mm. Uh, you can actually use it to buy movie tickets. Actually, quite, quite seamless. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, what, what, then you use BigPay also? I also use BigPay, uh, mainly because uh, I travel a lot. So mm. that's great for traveling overseas. Mm. And you also get points. You get uh, Asia big points as well, mm. which you can use immediately as well. And you also use Fave? Oh, sorry, not Fave. Uh, Fave Boost? used to. Uh, Boost, uh, <coughs> yeah, when, whenever it's supported. Because one benefit about Boost is that you can get instant rewards with a shake. With the shake rewards. Okay. So how do you balance them? Because like so many rewards, so many points. Which one? I mean, how do you know how much to put in which mm-hmm. wallet? How, how do you do that? For me, I don't put okay. everything. I don't put top, really top out a lot. So okay. my usage pattern is based on usage basis. Mm. So let's say if I go to a restaurant and then okay, they accept Grab, they accept Bush. And I see Boost, okay, I can get rewards. So what I do is I just top up when I need to use it. So how do you know? Okay, so let's say if there's a vendor, right? Mm-hmm. Merchant that supports Grab, Boost mm-hmm. and... Um, okay, Grab and Boost. Yep. Which one do you choose to use? Uh, depends on the mood, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> depends because some, some shops they offer like additional cashback uh-huh. on Boost. So I, I'll, if, that, if that situation arises, then I use Boost. But for me, the go to the go uh, the go to wallet would be Grab. Okay, so your everyday I would assume is Grab yes. and, and Touch and Go. Yeah, because Touch and Go is just for, toll. for tolls, yes. RFID. Yep. But Grab is for everything else, for yep. rides and everything else. Yeah. Okay, so for me, it's, it's the same. Um, I use Grab almost every day. Uh, my Grab uh, e-wallet is hooked up to my credit card, so it will auto-reload, uh, but I set it to a limit of 100 ringgit. So most of the time, my e-wallet will probably have 200 ringgit. Uh, the other e-wallet that I use every day is, of course, Touch & Go. Again, Touch & Go is also hooked up to my credit card, uh, and it's a threshold of 100 ringgit. So, I use the technology kind of like to automate how I manage my money. Um, I, I cannot keep up with rewards so mm-hmm. much, so I don't use Touch & Go for paying at all. Uh, only for tolls, specifically for tolls. Because, uh, again, it's very difficult for me to keep track of how many points I have where. Um, the other e-wallet that I use every day is Keeple Park. Uh, and that's also for convenience. So, uh, especially in the office here uh, that we that we are, uh, the the parking system uses license plate recognition (LPR). Uh, so it's very easy. I'll go I'll go in. The the app tells me okay, I'm already entered. And then when, once I want to go out, I just make sure that there's enough money in my e-wallet to pay for parking, and it scans my license plate and it's done. So I am really hooked on the convenience aspect. Um, but I mentioned just now, I'm, I'm, I, I have this sticky feeling when it comes to e-wallet. I don't like giving money to <coughs> companies I really don't trust. I don't feel Grab ha- is very high in terms of the trust barometer thing. I, it's, I, I mean, what they're doing with, with this uh, driver thing, and I don't know, I just don't trust them. Uh, and I don't know people enough to trust them fully. And obviously, I don't trust Tachengo as I do a bank. So I was very sticky when it comes to when it comes to e-wallet. I prefer using my credit card. Yeah, because and it's protected by like PIDM. You need some, a bit assurance. Yeah. yeah, it's not a company that you set up today and then you just close the next day. Yeah, yeah. I, that's a good point. So a lot of the, I mean, all of the bank accounts are backed up by PIDM, which is insured. So you have up to two hundred thousand ringgit per account. Although e-wallet uh, you need licenses to operate an e-wallet in Malaysia, there is no such assurance from Bank Negara or from PIDM for e-wallets. And that's very dangerous because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that put in a lot of money in the in the e-wallets. <coughs> that's that's one thing, right? So I'm very sticky. And I, I prefer to use Samsung Pay. 
uh, because it's hooked up to my credit card, and I'm, I I know my my bank has has an insurance uh, if there's anything happens to me the, or to my account. The reason why I moved to a e wallet was because uh, I had to use an iPhone as my daily phone, and Apple Pay is not supported in Malaysia yet, so I cannot use NFC payment. I cannot hook up my credit card to my iPhone. So I decided the easiest way for me to still continue to be able to pay with my phone was to jump to Grab Pay, uh, to Grab, and I've been hooked ever since. Uh, not because of the convenience, but because of the reward. So I'm now like a like a reward junkie. Uh, I, no, not reward junkie. A points junkie. So I will try to pay for everything and the most expensive things that I can pay with using Grab, so that I can get the 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 points, so that I can get the rewards. The rewards are like pretty good also lah. I mean, um, I remember there's one uh, where you can get like a whole cinema for 200,000 points. So I just want to show you that. So 200,000 points for like a whole uh, freaking cinema. And then, you know, you can get like an airport for 100,000 points. Uh, I remember last time there was like a voucher for okay. JD Sports. 1,000 ringgit voucher for JD Sports. Uh, right now, I only have about 61,000 points. Uh. Okay, okay, a lot of people <laughs> maybe can argue, hey, dude, you know what? You can probably, it's probably cheaper to pay for the cinema outright than to collect the points and use the points to pay. But the thing is, I'm already paying uh, using Grab. I'm already using uh, the cars. The, the delivery uh, service. The delivery. Uh, why not, right? Oh. If it's it's, it's going to be free for me. So that, that, that convenience, I like, but I don't like that there's, there's no trust. I'm not sure if you guys feel the same. So you let me know, uh, and let me know how how many points you have in your Grab Map. Uh, how many points? How many ringgit you have in your e wallets? Okay, so you've already known uh, the wallets that Alex and I use. So mostly is mostly is Grab, uh, Touch and Go. Uh, Alex uses Big Pay, uh, and I use Keep Up. So there's slight differences. We've also asked the whole strategy of team members uh, what app they use and why. And uh, we made like a special segment for that, so check that out right now. Nick, yep. What you wanna use? Uh, I think I use Grab the most because of the rewards and because of Grab Car and how everything's connected. But I also use Big Pay quite a bit, but that's only when I'm traveling. Nick, yeah. What you wanna use? E-wallet. Ooh, cash is king. Tapi kalau kena guna e-wallet, saya guna Big Pay. Sebab apa? Bila saya buat uh, payment dekat counter, saya tak dapat lagi shilling yang berat tu. So, senang. Lagi satu, dekat app BitPay, kita boleh tengok kita punya transaction. Najib. No comment, no comment. Why you wallet use? Shoo, 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 shoo. You wallet, you wallet. Uh, oh, okay. Oh. Kalau you wallet kan, ah, saya paling suka guna boost. Apa kan? Boost tu kan, paling banyak sekali promosi. Hari-hari ada promosi dia. Tak percaya, pergi tengok. Lepas tu, Boost paling banyak kat agar kedai, support Dan yang paling best sebenarnya, boost tu dibagi cashback Wajib dapat, memang akan dapat Mesti dapat Dan selain satu lagi, ha, punya banyak boost ni punya promosi Satu lagi dia ada mission tau Mission tu pun ada bonus tambahan Lepas tu, dia selalu buat cabutan bertuah lah Walaupun saya belum bertuah lagi, tapi Boost ni banyak sangat lah, promosi dia Best, kau cuba sini. sendiri eh, Tapi kalau nak daftar tu, jangan lupa guna saya punya referral lah Oh Sorry, I had my Sony noise cancelling headphones in. What's the question? Huh? What's the so question? Oh, um, I use Grab Pay. I recently started using Grab Pay, but usually I use QR Pay because I don't like to maintain like a wallet. Uh, I also use Touch and Go's e-wallet because I need to pay tolls. But yeah, that's about it. Ray. Ah, uh, yes. Hi. What e-wallet you use? Uh, I use Grab, it's because you get a ton of rewards and sometimes I also use a Touch and Go e-wallet because recently there's this um, movie ticket where you can get two tickets for 25 ringgit so recently I've been using that. Uh. Yes, you use? I use Grab Pay as my e-wallet. You wanna know why? Because I'm planning to get a cinema myself. So for me, my favorite e-wallet will be Touch and Go I guess because Touch and Go has been everywhere. Like you know, back then we used Touch and Go card, and now it become e wallet. And when you drive, you can just use RFID or Direct Pay. Direct is it called Direct Pay? Ah? okay, never mind. So it's actually like we have been using for so many years, lah. 
That's why and every, a lot of players accept it as well. So that would be my e-wallet or my choice. Huh? Okay, so now you know what everybody else uses in uh, in Sony Chow. We're gonna like continue talking about like uh, e-wallets, right? So there's also a lot of confusion when it comes to e-wallet. What is an e-wallet, right? So essentially, e-wallet is something that you can put money in, and you can pay for services. But there are also differences. One major difference uh, that's getting a lot of people confused is May mm -hmm. and QR Pay. So Alex, can you explain what is the difference? Maybank May, right, is basically Maybank trying to get the traditional product into the e-wallet segment. So initially, they introduced QR Pay. So QR Pay is an easy way to make payments using the Maybank to you app. And initially, you need no, to have so a... So QR Pay, you need a Maybank to you app or can other bank accounts also pay via QR Pay? Only for Maybank. QR Pay is Maybank. QR Pay is like the... Maybank payment method yeah. for Maybank accounts. Yes. Okay. Initially. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then? So initially it's only for open to Maybank users. Mm. So if you have a savings account account, you can pay using QR Pay. Mm. And of course there are concerns like uh, you know, uh, is it safe? And also what about those who are not Maybank customers? Mm. So to solve those two issues, they introduce May. Mm. So essentially it's a virtual Maybank account mm. which anyone can open. You just download the app and sign in and you get a May account. So it's a virtual May bank account without the hassle of opening a, sorry, it's a virtual bank account without the hassle of opening a bank account. So yeah. you don't have to go to a bank, yes. you don't have to proof, do you have to prove your IC? You don't need proof IC. What, what yeah. is the process? So you just uh, download the app, register, and then you need to key in your IC number obviously for security purposes and uh, you, you also need to verify your IC by taking a picture and all that mm. and once that's done, you're sorted. So essentially it's the security of a bank yeah. In the form of an e-wallet. Correct. Okay. But of, well, of course, uh, you don't get the benefits of an actual bank account, which means that you don't earn interest okay. on your know, May balance. Yeah. But the beauty of it is that you use the same system as a QRP. So with the May account, you can just use it on any uh, supported terminals. Mm. Uh, I think you know, second, uh, most of the merchants right now, the new ones, they have a credit card terminal with a QRP scanner at the size. Mm -hmm. So can you use it over there? Okay, so yep. with May, it there's two ways, right? Yeah. Uh, you can generate a QR code, and then the terminal can pay. Yeah. Or you can uh, scan. Can, can, uh, or you can scan. Yeah. Is it the same with the Maybank QR pay? Yeah, it's the same. It's essentially using the same QR pay system. Mm. But one thing I need to highlight is that since it's like a virtual Maybank account, right? Mm. You do get a Maybank account number. So that means you can actually um, deposit cash at a cash deposit machine or can get friends to top it up for you by transferring funds. So it, it goes and then it goes immediately into the yes, May account. Uh, May account. Yeah. Expanding from this, right? So let's say I don't have a May bank account. I create a May account. Yep. It's a virtual May bank account, right? So essentially after that if I create a May bank account, right, I can transfer my May it's going to be seamless. It's going right? seamless. I so can match yeah. my bank, my May Bank account with my May account. Uh, when you, if you do have all these accounts together, if you log into Maybank to you, you will see your current account, savings account, and May account. Yeah. It's listed as account under your name. Okay. And here's another extra benefit. With May, you can actually create a virtual uh, Visa prepaid card, and that can be used for Samsung Pay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. There's a lot of oh okay so that I mean that mean it expands the the usability la, so That's right. from beyond an e-wallet yeah so I guess that that brings uh, it to my point that when it becomes an app right the permutations of how you can use this is a lot you can use it in the traditional sense traditional sense where you don't need a physical card you don't need to be tied to a to the to the bank institution uh, like Visa or whatever, right? It's everybody that can read a QR, mm -hmm. you can pay. So the transaction is seamless. Uh, or it can be tied to this traditional banking system where it needs to be verified uh, and secure. Like um, for me, for example, you can match it to you. You can create a virtual Visa. Prepaid card, card, prepaid yeah. card yeah. that you can put in your Samsung Pay or use it to buy stuff online. Yeah. yeah. So, so that way because you you cannot pay with Grab Pay with you buying things online, right? Like Lazada, yeah. or whatever. Not at the not, moment. Not at the moment, lah. Yeah. But they do, they're starting to link to some applications like, for example, John Parking. Yeah. You can never Grab Pay. And Soka. Soka, yes. yes. Yeah. So the the permutation is a lot, and I can understand there is a degree of confusion. But the gist of it is like this. You have a mediator, which is the e-wallet, that is backed by the company. 
in this example, it could be grab or it could be keeper, it could be touch and go. And then you put in money into the app and the mediator secures the money for payments. So essentially the mediator say, look, I have uh, Alexa's money and Alexa's money is good for this transaction. Um, it's very dangerous because it's very close to being a bank already. Yeah. And what is the future, right? So the future, if you see China as, an, as, a, as a very good example of e-wallet and fintech adop adoption, right? The companies like Alipay and WeChat Pay are now starting to dish out credit, loan. There is a lot of good in it. So small vendors, people who are small businesses, again, selling those uh, nasi lemak or whatever in stalls, they might not be able to get credit or it might be difficult for them, but they might need a lot of cash. Being able to get it instantly from an e-wallet is a strong enabler for all these businesses. Yeah. The problem is, as the e-wallet operators start to dish out all these loans, they are also open to being able to set the credit limit, or not credit limit, set the interest, interest repayment terms based on whatever they feel like because they are not regulated. I mean, or, or at least loosely regulated. Mm -hmm. yep. So it could be like today, your interest rate is 0.5% and tomorrow it could be 30%. It's the same predicament that Grab uh, food uh, riders and Grab drivers are facing because they can change the terms uh, for example, like food, food panda, right? Yep. They can change the, the terms, schemes, yeah, yeah, in whichever way they like, and then yeah, there'll be a lot of tussle between the JPJ la, between uh, Minister of Transport la, between Said Sadiq la, whatever. But at the end of the day, the resolution is not there. Mm. There's no solution, and what happens is people like the drivers and maybe us when um, e wallets start dishing out uh, loans, we are getting stuck. Yeah, it's not like banks because banks they can't just simply change interest rate. There's actually a proper you know a guy Bank to follow. Bank the sets interest yeah. rate. They have to follow. Follow yes. Uh, Same as credit cards as well. You know, you cannot just charge. I want to charge twenty one percent. Yeah, for yeah. example. Yeah. yeah. The the benefit in terms of enablement is okay. All, all these small vendors, it opens up businesses to them. They can accept money with from more people. They don't have to invest in POS machines. Mm. They don't have to invest in. Uh, transaction uh, amount, volume, yeah, volume uh, yeah. to, to get like a preferential rate uh, from the credit cards and from the banks. Yes, it is empowering and powerful for the small vendors, but it's also very dangerous. La. Mm. I mean, until this proper regulation is set, we're, we're, we're probably we're in this like kind of like a catch to situation. La. I mean, mm. wh wh what do you think about all this? I think it's okay for now. I guess uh, right now it's quite loose because I think you want to create an open environment right now. And I think I've seen a lot of questions asking, why do we need so many e-wallet players? I think there's a benefit to that. At least every player is able to to, to demonstrate what can, can be done. Mm. And at least we can see new innovations like how uh, each e-wallet, they have their own um, key feature. Like for example, FaithPay, what which I think is interesting is that you can actually use the e-wallet to order food from the table, pay straight away, and you can just walk off after you're done. Mm. And like for example, touch and go, you have RFID, mm. uh, you also have uh, boost rewards and all that. So you can see more innovations in e-wallet, but eventually when there's more people getting on board, then that's where I think Ben Agara and the authorities need to step in and to put more uh, checks in place so that users are protected. Yeah, that's a good point. The problem is for me is I'm not even sure whether Bank Nagara is up to speed mm -hmm. on like what to set. I mean, when it comes to technology advancement, they, they, you want branding. La. So Bank Nagara has not branded themselves to be, okay, we are at the cutting edge when it comes to fintech and we know how, how to move, where to go to, to take care of your money. Similarly, if you take pull the thread from uh, our telco industry, right? The Malaysian market oh. is super saturated. Uh, there's just too many players in, uh, okay, let's say we take Telco uh, as an example. We have uh, Maxis, Cellcom, DG, U-Mobile, yes. Unify, mm. and Yes4G. So mm. these are the four, uh, the six. six main players, okay, main. And then we have license holders, people like the Altel. Yeah. Uh, they, they are a license holder. They have license to operate, operate. and they hold spectrum, but they, they're, they're barely in the market. Yeah. They operate lesser than an MVNO. Yeah. And then you have MVNOs like TuneTalk, XOX. O overall, there's probably like 10 players. 
we are a market of 30 million, million people. people. Let me put that into perspective. South Korea, they only have three major telcos. SK, SK, KT, KT. and LG. And then probably a few other smaller NVOs, but not more than 10. And they are a market of 50 million people. How are operators serving, how are operators in Malaysia serving all these people? Uh, telcos are facing a problem because the market is saturated. Uh, we are not any better in terms of getting better um, service or better internet. I mean, okay lah, our internet in Malaysia is cheap and it's fairly okay. But I feel that there's no innovation and there's no movement. It's the same thing, unlimited data, contracts and whatever. There's really not much thing that's moved. So why am I bringing Telco into this thing? It's because if you take that as an example, right? e-wallet might be the same and there is a risk because you can take telco as an example in terms of saturation and the market will be stagnant in terms of innovation there's not much people are just going to pay with rewards yeah. uh, it's a race to the bottom lah mm-hmm. for every for for the operators but then if you look at how e-hailing has evolved in the country is scary because previously we had uber yep. and grab okay. And then now Uber has gone because there's, I wouldn't call it, would you call it a merger? Yeah, it's I can see. Like, it's like an acquisition, acquisition whatever strategic yeah. thing lah. Where Uber bought a stake in Grab and in exchange, they need to get out of the exchange, market. In uh, exchange, Uber <laughs> gets out from, from, from Malaysia. And then we have Grab. Obviously, yes, we have other e-hailing companies like what? Mula, Mica, Mica, and Easy the other one. I forgot. There's another one. Remember? Easy Cap. Dexy. Uh, Dexy. Yeah. There are other players, but those players are nowhere near, yeah, cannot correct. compete. What has happened is that, that that has created somewhat of a monopoly for Grab. And the government has allowed this. And, and it's scary for me because the government has allowed for the telco market to be oversaturated. The government has allowed for kind of like a soft monopoly of e-hailing in the country. And now we have the same situation happening with regards to e-wallet. There is just too many e-wallet players, 47 license holders, serving a population of 30 million people. What's going to happen is that there's going to be a consolidation. I feel, uh, this yeah. is my prediction, there's going to be a consolidation because this is a money game. Mm-hmm. I mean, peop- they need money to run. Once Correct. they're out of money, they just pull out. You see this happening in... Uh, like banks, banking sector. Banks, yeah. you see this happening in uh, e-commerce platforms. Yeah. So we had 11th Street, Lazada, Lazada Shopee. Shopee. And then there's also Gem5 back then. Yeah, yeah. Gem5, uh, chucked up, tutup yep. ready. It's going to be the same. Once the money run out, runs out, there's going to be consolidation. And the ones with the bigger pockets are going to makan everybody. Yeah, like for example, Boost, right? The reason why it's popular is because of the cashback. How long can they sustain that? Yeah, cashback is money out. Yeah, it's actually cost from them. Yeah. Now. So they yeah. can't say it's the same business model as Gem5. Yeah. They try to offer ridiculous the lowest rebates. prices, yeah. uh, but then they they cannot sustain because they cannot acquire users as fast as they expected. Yeah, um, it's going to be the same thing. Same as uh, Uber and Grab back then, because they're dishing out incentives, yeah. dishing out rewards, cheap rides, and they, you know it's it's coming from somewhere. It's a cost for them. Yeah. Yeah. And the scary part is this: we, the people who are driving this business, is essentially powerless because of weak regulations and weak pressure from the government to regulate these uh, e-wallet players. Uh, I think Europe is a good example. Lah. I mean, they are very fearless in terms of coming out with summonses and regulations, and yeah. even for Google and Facebook, and these companies have to pay up. In Malaysia, uh, Asia, for example, where the adoption is high, there's very weak regulations. Mm-hmm. I don't even know whether there's strong regulations in Singapore, but I know in Malaysia it's very weak. So, imagine this. A market size of billions. We as users put in money. It's not serious now because it feels like, oh, it's new technology, yeah. I'm just putting 100 ringgit here, a small amount. Ringgit there. Yeah. But 30 million people or a million people putting in 100 ringgit, that is a substantial amount of money. It's growing. Yes. Yeah. So who is regulating all this? I know the topic started out with e-wallets and what are the best e-wallets and uh, what do you recommend? But if you're looking to, to the future, right? The scary part here is that We, we won't be able to run away from this. Yeah. 
this is the future. Uh, e-wallet will be the preferred way to handle money in the future. But if we don't step in, the government and us as consumer, we don't exercise our powers to say, look, I will only go with the e-wallet that I trust and that looks after me. We're gonna be we're gonna be screwed, man. Pardon my French, but that's it's, yeah. you know. I mean, okay. Do you have anything to say about this? What, what do you think? I agree as well because, like, for example, um, in thinking about e-wallets, right? Not every single e-wallet e provider provides the same cash up policy. Mm. Some of them. That's like, a very good point. Yeah, yeah, some of them you need to pay an admin fee to withdraw the money out. Like, why? Why is this thing? Why is this their thing? Yeah. For example. Which one is that? Uh, I can't remember which one, but I remember. Every e wallet have different policies. Some you can withdraw money out, no no question asked. But there's a time window, lah, right? There's time window. Some could be, there could be a time frame that okay, we'll give you a check in certain days. So it's inconsistent. Mm. So the thing is, if this belongs to me, mm. I have the right to control my money, but I don't. Mm. And some, I think they they have different way of uh, forfeiting dormant accounts. So that's the thing. Like for banks, right? If let's say if you don't use the account for uh, X period of there's a time. Process. There's, there's a process. There's due diligence. Yeah, and then it goes to I think the National Treasury yeah. for the unclaimed then you can money. Claim it, claim it back. Yeah, yeah. Can claim it back. Mm. So the money must be surrendered to the government. But for e-wallets, I'm not sure whether they have such policies in place. Wow. So which means they can just forfeit money. That's a very good point. And for me, it's like it's like how Tachingo handles unclaimed money from the cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the same thing. So it's free money, man. I mean, that's yeah. not good. The government has to. Okay, I'm. I might sound like I'm blaming the government, but I'm not. But you can't blame me to say that I've not seen any movement with regards to policies like this. And it's scary because it's going to, it's only going to get serious. Uh, I am foreseeing, and already Grab is already doing. They're already providing credit, right? Yeah. To certain users, right? Yeah. In Malaysia, you can pay Grab Pay later. Yeah, there's yeah. a Grab Pay later, which essentially is like credit. Uh, if you are verified by them to be able to receive credit, they will allow you to take for something and pay for it later. Uh, and I foresee this is going to be happening to um, merchants on uh, not merchants, people who are using this for business lah. So they will go into providing credit soon. Uh, not credit like loans. I, yeah, I micro foresee, loans. I yeah. foresee that happening very soon because the right business they allowed that mm -hmm. they uh, they gave you cars, not give you like so they it's like a contra basis like okay we for uh, give you a car you just have to fulfill certain requirements you pay back and you're done and it's scary because imagine doing this to a bank. Imagine if no. Imagine if a bank do, does this to you. You go to a bank, say, "Okay, I want to withdraw money." Oh, sorry, sir, you have to wait for maybe two weeks, and you have to pay fifty bucks. That sounds uh -huh. like a scam, uh -huh. man. I don't know. It's scary. Yeah. Uh, I think more needs to be done before. And some of the government's pushing for higher adoption of e-wallets. And as announced in budget, right? uh -huh. yeah. So as announced in budget twenty twenty, mm. uh, the government's going to give thirty ringgit to every verified e-wallet account in Malaysia. Why does why 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 are they doing that? The, to, the objective to, to increase the usage of e-wallets. For me, there are two ways around it. Okay, yeah, you can encourage people to sign up, but for me, I think it's better if they focus on the merchants, how to get more merchants on board instead of giving free money to people. No, the thing is, okay, let's say they give the free money, right? Because of the dif different policies in terms of getting the money back, right? Essentially, they can say that they give the money, but they could have a different dealing with the e-wallet operators to say like, okay, you just put it there, like, if you don't use that, give it back. Ah. I'm not sure, but the thing is, um, I'm not sure how they're going to disperse it because they have yet to reveal how they're going to distribute the money. How, how they're going to verify. So let's say if I have a family, uh, no, I have a family, I have uh, four kids, and I have my wife, obviously, so there's six people. All of them, I just open an e-wallet account. I can potentially game it and get 30 ringgit. If the the thing is, I think you need to be verified because um, most of e-wallets right now, you have two ways, you have two levels. One mm. is you just create e-wallet that's not verified. I think you have restricted uh, benefits. What is the verification standard? I see. No, I mean like there's no standard in the budget. They have not stipulated what that verification is. Yeah, right? they say verified e-wallet. So for me, for my understanding, is that like e-wallets are verified. Like for example, touch and go. If you verify e-wallet, you unlock. So that means that, okay. Let's say if all of us, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, don't even think about the family. So let's say if all of us have four e-wallets, yep. we essentially get 120 ringgit. No, only one person each. Because the... the Which one? Which e-wallet, right? Yes, they haven't sector. I think you need to choose. Because for <sighs> me, it's, it's based on IC number. 
and because uh, how they're going to disperse it is based on on uh, formulations age 18 and above and you have an annual income of less than 100,000 bucks. That's so weird, man. Yeah. So this, this, we're now moving to this thing about the future of e-wallets, right? Um, I don't think we are denying that this is the way to go. The scary thing for me is that it's just who is going to regulate all this? Hopefully, uh, they regulate this probably before some, something bad happens. Because let's say if someone, you know, touch wood, close shop, what happens? Because we've seen a lot of startups setting up shop in Malaysia and then they close a few months later. Like, mm. look at the bicycle uh, rentals uh, service providers. They just come and go. Like and the old bikes. And yeah, all that. correct. So that, that, that is kind of like an e-wallet thing also, yeah, right? Yeah, because you they're holding cash. Money. Yeah, and other people, like in Singapore, right, they are complaining because they can't get refunds and the company is basically bankrupt. Like, I can't do anything. Okay, so yeah. we're going to end on that note. Uh, I hope you find it useful. So we've we've gotten into detail about what is e-wallet, the different permutations of e-wallet. We also talk about uh, the types of e-wallets that we use. Uh, it's it's yeah, obviously positive. The problem is there's really lack of regulation and control, and it's very scary because it's our money. It it kind of like paints like a dystopian future, lah. Because you know, okay, let's say I put in all the money in my e-wallet. No, it's, it's dumb to do that. Lah. So let's say I have substantial amount of money and then it just disappears. Imagine one day you receive your salary in, through your e-wallet. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the future. That's really scary, so yeah. but people who, let's say people who are hooked on this, like Grab drivers, right? So let's say one nasi uh, goreng, uh, goreng pisang seller, he's like all in with Grab. His earnings and everything is with Grab. One day Grab says, okay, sorry, we are not verified anymore. All your money is with us. He, he goes out of business. That's somebody's livelihood. And um, some, something has to be done. So, uh, back to the topic, right? So, uh, Re- Richie, uh, thank you for the suggestion on the question. I hope we've answered your question in terms of what is e-wallet, what e-wallets are we using. I hope you guys find it useful. I just want to uh, remind everybody, if you find this useful, give us a like, uh, share it with your friends and family, get them to watch uh, LTA. Um, if you have any comments or suggestions, put them in the comment section below. We're more than happy to hear what you have to say, um, to, to discuss with you with, with whatever questions that you have. We're here, we're here to help you out and we're here to learn as well. As always, uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you find this useful. Uh, any parting words you want to put in, Alex, before we say bye-bye? Well, don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> okay, so this is Amin. This is Alex. And thank you very much for watching. Give us a uh, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And keep it locked on to searchnow.com for everything in technology that ma- for everything that matters in technology. Uh, catch you guys later. Bye. Hey, Amin, aren't we huh? supposed to do a giveaway? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. So we were like so engrossed into the topic, right? Okay, thanks for reminding uh, me, Alex. We're giving away the school search your t-shirt, one this and one that one, to a random commenter on our YouTube channel. So, uh, but to unlock this, I need a hundred comments. If I get a hundred comments, one of you will get this t-shirt, and another of you will get this t-shirt. So go on, comment, and if you like it, uh, no, go on, comment. If we hit 100, two of you guys are going to get the shits. All right, thank you very much, guys. Uh, Thanks for watching. Keep on commenting. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.